Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a stylized torn paper note taped to a piece of wood in Photoshop. You can download the project files for this tutorial to see how everything was put together and to have some photos to work from if you don't have any of your own. Let's get started. So the first thing that you need to have is a wood texture and ours is 1920 by 1080 and the reason I mention that is because if your file is a lot bigger or smaller any of the size settings that we use might vary a bit, so just keep that in mind. So the first thing that we need to do is drag our paper image into our wood background. And I'm going to convert that to a smart object by right clicking and choosing convert to smart object. And then I'm just going to resize it so it fits into our background. Next I'm going to give it a layer mask, so with that layer selected I'm just going to click new layer mask. And now I'm going to create the torn edge, and there's a couple ways you can do this. One of them is by using the polygonal lasso tool. So if you come up here and click and hold, you'll see it under the regular lasso tool. And I can click and draw kind of a jagged edge down here for my torn paper effect. And once I have that selection created, I can use the paint bucket tool and fill that layer mask with black. And you'll see it kind of creates a torn paper edge. But you'll also notice that it doesn't look very realistic. So you can always go in and fix that layer mask using some of Photoshop's more grungy brushes. But a lot of times that takes a while and it doesn't look quite as good as the next method that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to undo those changes. And the way that I'm going to do this is using a brush that I created by scanning a torn piece of white paper on a black background. That way we're using a real torn edge and so we're going to get a lot more realistic torn edge look. So I'm just going to use that brush and using black I'm going to click and then I'm going to drag it down to get rid of the rest of the paper. And you'll see that that torn edge looks a lot more realistic. And the brush that I just used is included in the project files just in case you don't have one of your own. Next I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Ctrl J and I'm going to convert that top one to a smart object. And I'm going to hide this layer underneath just to make it a little easier to see what we're doing. And I'm going to click any of these handles and once I have my selection, I'm going to right click inside and choose warp. Now I can drag this bottom right handle up and to the left to kind of simulate a curled page effect on the bottom right corner of our paper. Now I'm going to turn this other layer back on and I'm going to double click it to bring up the layer style dialog and I'm going to give it a color overlay of a really dark brown color, almost black, and hit OK. Now I'm going to right click that layer and convert it to a smart object. And I'm going to do the same thing with my warp, except this time I'm going to go in the opposite direction as the original one. Now I'm going to move this shadow layer down and to the right about 15 or 20 pixels. Next I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian blur and give it a blur of about 25 pixels and hit OK. Then I'm going to set the blend mode to linear burn and the opacity to 65%. And the good thing about smart objects and smart filters is that I can always go back in and adjust things without having to redo it. So I want this shadow to stick out a little more so I'm going to click this handle again and I'm going to right click inside and choose warp again and you'll see my original warp is still there. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm just going to pull that down just a little bit more. And when I hit enter you'll notice that the blur applies automatically. Next I'm going to double click on my paper layer and give it a drop shadow. And this is just going to be really subtle so you can barely notice it. But first I'm going to set the angle to 135 degrees so the light is coming from the top left. And I'm going to set it to about 10% opacity, the distance to 5 pixels and the size to about 10 pixels. If I click this preview on and off, you can just barely notice the effect. I'm also going to give it a gradient overlay. And I'm going to change that angle so the white part shows up in the bottom right corner of my paper. So negative 45. And then I'm going to open up my gradient and change the black stop to about 50%. That way it moves my gradient a little tighter and farther to the right. Next I'm going to set the blend mode for that gradient to screen and the opacity to about 85%. That way it just gives us a little lighting effect to go along with our shadow. Next I'm going to create the tape that holds the piece of paper to the wood. First I'm going to move these two layers down a bit. And then using my rectangle tool with shape selected, I'm going to click anywhere in my document to bring up the create rectangle dialog. 
and I'm going to make my rectangle about 250 pixels wide by 50 pixels tall. Then I can just double click the layer thumbnail here and change the color. And you want to use kind of a really light brown or tannish color. Now I'm just going to move and rotate my tape into position. Next we're going to add some layer styles to our tape. So one of the things that I want to do is make it look like it has kind of a crumbled paper effect. So to get that we're going to use this crumbled paper texture which is also included in the project files and I'm going to click edit, define pattern and you can change the name if you want but you don't really have to and hit OK. Now going back into my working document I'm going to double click on my tape to bring up the layer style dialog and I'm going to click Pattern Overlay and find the pattern that we just created. Then I'm going to set the Blend Mode to Linear Burn and the Opacity to about 25%. So you can see that it's added a subtle crumbled texture to our piece of tape. I'm also going to give it a little drop shadow and I'm going to make it 25% opacity and set the distance to about 3 and the size to 4 and hit OK. Now I just need to add the torn edges to my tape. So I'm going to click the tape layer and add a new layer mask. And I can use the same brush that I used before, but this time I'm going to show you using the polygonal lasso tool. So I'm going to press L to select my polygonal lasso tool. And I'm just going to draw a slightly jagged edge. And then close my shape. And using the paint bucket tool, I'm going to fill that area with black in the layer mask. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And that looks pretty good. Now I need to create my piece of tape for the other side. So again, I'm going to click my rectangle tool. And I'm going to click on my document. And this time I'm going to make it about 230 pixels wide by 50 pixels tall. And I'm going to double click my original piece of tape. That way I can copy the same color and use it for my new one. Now I want to use the same layer styles that I applied to my first piece of tape. So I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag these layer style effects from the first layer to the new one. And you'll see that it copies everything that I did into the new layer. Now I'm going to click and rotate this piece of tape into position. And again I'm going to add a layer mask and using the same technique as before I'm going to give it some torn edges. Now all that's left is to add our text. So I'm going to use the type tool and the color black and I'm just going to write a little note here. And then I'm going to move it into position and resize it and rotate it just a little bit to make it look more realistic. I'm also going to go into the layer styles for my text layer and give it a really slight outer glow. So using linear burn I'm going to set the opacity to about 35% and change the size to just two pixels. That way it'll soften the edge a bit and make it look a little more like regular felt tip. Then I'm going to set the opacity to about 95%, which is barely noticeable, but just adds a little more realistic touch. Now we can select all of our layers and click on any of the handles here, and we can scale it up and rotate it and move it into position for our final image. And since everything is a smart object, you won't see any loss in quality. Lastly, I'm going to hold Alt and click one of these arrows to minimize all the layer styles. And I'm going to add a curves layer on top of everything in our document. We're going to use this curves layer to create lighting effect or a vignette around our image. So I'm going to bring that curve down just a bit. And I'm going to paint using a soft black brush in the middle of the image. That way the curves layer only affects the outside of our image. So you can see if I turn that off and back on that it adds a nice vignette. And that's it. Since everything uses smart objects and layer masks, you can go back in and tweak almost anything without having to redo any steps. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.